All right, folks, we are back for the second installment of the Muscle and Strength Nutritional Period Pyramid. So, what happened the first week? I introduced the whole thing. I talked about why it's here, because too often we're putting the cart before the horse, uh, late publications, and even just articles in, uh, in sometimes well-respected areas are going on and on about SUPS, timing, micronutrients, food sources, good and bad foods, things like that, without any kind of respect to the big picture items and putting them in some kind of semblance of order. So I've got guys who might know the, the vitamin characteristics of their food and they remove egg yolks and they know exactly how many minutes after their workout they take their supplements, but they don't know how many calories they're eating and that is just going to really hinder you towards getting to your goals. So we've got the rank of importance from 1, 2, 3 to 4 to 5, most to least important, although they all are important, it's just we need to have those contexts and degrees. And then here are the actual steps themselves. We have calories, energy balance, and rate of weight change, the macronutrient composition of the diet, micronutrients and minerals, timing, and of course, supplements is the least most least of the important things to pay attention to. So today, second installment, we're talking about the macronutrient composition of the diet. So we figured out what our calories were uh, and where they should be depending on your goal last time. This time we're going to figure out where those calories come from. So the first step is to know that protein, carbs, and fat are calorie providers. Same as alcohol, alcohol too, but we're not going to, for the purposes of this, we're going to assume all of you guys don't drink. Yeah, not realistic, that's okay. But um, for this nutritional pyramid, we're going to talk about just where do our contribution on a regular basis, hopefully you're not drinking alcohol regularly where you need to calculate it, uh, of protein, carbs, and fat, do your calories come from, okay? So, first we need some info on these bad boys. Often people will prescribe macronutrients either as a gram per pound or gram per kilogram, based on your body weight, or a percentage. Um, both have their pros and cons. Uh, gram per pound is respective of your body mass, which makes sense. Okay? Um, however, it doesn't give respect to your metabolism, per se, or how, many, how much of a caloric budget you have. So if someone has a relatively low energy expenditure um, and someone gives them all gram per pound figures, they could very well eat so much that they would be messing up their number one, gaining too fast, right? So, percentage of calories, great because it deals with just the, the hard data you have on how many calories can I eat and, or should I eat to get the right rate of weight gain, weight loss, or maintenance that I want, okay? Now, that said, I use a mix because protein is predominantly not used for energy. It is a little bit, but at most like 10% of your calories, okay? Um, so, if protein is structural, because it's the building blocks for bodies, I like to assign it based on body weight, while carbs and fat, I keep as percentages, okay? So general info that we need to know is this is going to be percentage-based, and this is going to be body weight-based, just for ease of figuring this stuff out, okay? And, oh God, we have... We have tape and fall. We're okay. The Eagles landed. We're set. We're good. Pretend it never happened. Needed a better pen. So, we've got percentages for fat and carbs, body weight for protein. Other things we need to know is that there are nine calories per gram in fat, and then four calories per gram for both carbs and protein. Okay. So if you know what your calories that you're dealing with are, you can now figure out where they come from. Okay. So let's stick with the same paradigm we had before. We have the goals of dieting and gaining. Okay. So if you are dieting, you're going to be having to rob Peter to pay Paul. You're going to be forcing yourself to either not get enough protein, carbs, or fat simply because you don't have enough calories, and that's where they come from. So some things need to be put in place to try to minimize uh, the kinds of uh, things we don't want to happen, like lean body mass losses, metabolic slowdown, all that, all that kind of fun stuff. So typically the ranges that are acceptable for these guys um, are going to be close, but just a little subtly different. Uh, one is that we're probably going to need a little more protein to protect against lean body mass while we're dieting. However, if you've already screwed up number one, it won't matter. Okay? If you're losing, for example, someone eating lower than I would recommend um, in terms of protein, but dieting and losing 0.5 to 1% of their body weight per week, 
going to maintain more muscle mass than someone eating what I am recommending in protein, but losing 1.5 to 2 percent of their body weight per week. Okay, so this still holds true. Okay, order of importance. So let's get that in order. So, based on uh, studies, anecdotal evidence, and uh, my experience as a coach, what probably makes the most sense for protein intake while you're dieting is somewhere between one to 1.4 grams per pound. Okay? Why is there a range? Uh, and that's a hard number for everybody because a lot of things will affect us and we'll talk about that. Okay? The next step is to deal with our other essential nutrients. Carbohydrates aren't essential, but they certainly will benefit your training and that's the most important thing for preventing lean body mass loss is training and how quickly do you lose weight. After that, macronutrients are important. That's one thing that this nutritional period pyramid tends to not represent is how important training is. Okay. Training is by far the most influential thing that will prevent you from losing uh, lean body mass during a cut. And if you're not training, it's, you're not going to be gaining muscle, period. You can put a protein shake on a bench, but that bar isn't going anywhere. Okay? So, uh, we don't, we, well, carbs are important, but they're not essential, so I like to set fat first. While you're dieting, I typically lower the fat a little more than I would typically like in the off-season, just because if carbs are too low, it can really sabotage your training, which will then make your lean body mass retention uh, fail, okay, or not be as effective. So I tend to go with a 15 to 25 percent of calories while you are dieting, and then the rest for carbs, okay. 15 percent is a little low, um, and that's why diets don't last for forever, okay. Um, because it's important to maintain enough carbohydrates so you can sustain your training, so you can sustain your muscle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, as we move into our gaining phase, we don't eat as much protein. We're not at risk for losing lean body mass just from being in a catabolic state for extended periods of the day. So I would say we can drop down these requirements a little bit, even down as low as 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound. Okay, reasonable intake. Oh my God, I told you something below gram per pound. The bodybuilders are going to kill me. Of course, I'm a bodybuilder, so it's all good. Um, and for those of you who do grams per kilogram, uh, sorry, uh, all you Europeans and Southern Hemisphere guys, just know that there are 2.204 um, pounds per kilogram. So if you want to do a little math. Uh, okay, so now we've got more calories to play with. We can have a higher fat percentage. I like to see something between the lines of 20 to 30 percent. Okay, and then once again, the rest for carbohydrates. Okay. Now, this is not going to be perfect for everybody. It's not even going to be right for everybody. I've probably got, say, oh, 10 to 15 percent of my clients on percentages of fat that are higher than 30 percent. And then I got another, say, maybe 5 percent who are on actually keto diets, meaning that they're on like 120 grams or lower of carbohydrates on a regular basis, average per week. And that might even not be while they're dieting. Like I said, 5%. And so, I mean, if you add those two numbers together, maybe 2 out of 10 people are not going to appropriately need to have their, their carbs that high and just happen to do better with a, uh, a high-fat, low-carb approach instead. How do you figure that out? Well, you're just going to have to guinea pig it out, okay? But this will work for, I'd say, 80% of people who are maybe, let's say, 20 to 40. I had a good question about age on my Facebook page. This is probably appropriate for people who are like 20 to 40. Maybe even 20 to 50, but I'll say 20 to 40 to be safe. Why does it change? Yeah, you don't handle carbs as well as you get older, and you don't get the same anabolic response from your body in response to protein. So maybe as you get older, you might need to have higher amounts of fat, higher amounts of protein. But just remember that it's also going to be coming from a slowdown of just energy in total, so you won't have as many calories to play with. So you don't want to go so low that you're actually getting keto unless you find that actually works well for you. So I would say these intakes will work good for 80% of 20 to 40 year olds, 20 to 40 year olds, okay? Um, so I, I wish I could make a video that would just encompass everybody and everyone would be able to, you know, hop on their, their, their unicorn ride the rainbow to magical nutrition, but it's just too more, more individual than that. But this is a great place to start for 80% of most of the people watching this video, okay? So bear with me on that limitation. All right, next thing I want to do is actually work out an example here. 
So we stick with our 200 pound male who was kind of me, like last time. Um, and let's take a dead middle kind of uh, energy balance. We've got 3,000 calories to play with. Okay, oops. Uh, let's say he's uh, gaining, so we'll go lean gaining. Okay, protein, carbs, fat. Okay, we'll make it easy. Uh, we'll just do his protein at one gram per pound, which is 800 calories. Okay, and then we'll set his fat at 25%. Uh, um, and let's, so he's on 3,000, actually let's put him up to 3,200 calories, because he's lean gaining, so he needs to be in a slight surplus, right? My bad. 3,200 calories, which means 25% uh, of that is 800 calories, which is roughly 90 grams of fat. I think that's 810 calories, but we'll just keep it there, you know. Okay, and that leaves us with another 1,600 calories left, so we'll put his carbs at 400, okay? And that adds up to roughly 16, or sorry, 3,200 calories. Boom, okay? That is your lean gaining diet for the guy that I just talked about. Now, if he's dieting, okay, it's gonna be slightly different because now he needs to take this down to enough to lose that 0.5 to 1%. So let's say he's doing some cardio and we bring him down uh, 500 calories from his day-to-day uh, -day intake and add some cardio expenditure on top of that. He's now consuming 2,500 calories uh, we bumped that protein up a little bit, uh, right around, let's say, 1.1, 1.2, because I'm not that lean right now. As I got leaner, I probably have a little more. And we'll just go 225 protein, which gives me 900 calories. Okay. Um, got the fat carb order off a little bit. Fat, uh, we'll put at 20%. So now that's 500, which is roughly 55 grams. I think that's 495 or whatever. Okay. That is roughly 500. And then we have 1,100 calories uh, for carbs. And then boom, we got 275 grams of carbs. So we've got enough carbs to, to, to satisfy training needs, enough fat to not lose our mind and maintain some semblance of a normal hormonal, hormonal pattern, and enough protein to protect against lean body mass losses. Okay? And that is how you might do it. Other things will come into play with how, as far as you know, do, we do, do we do refeeds and that sort of thing. We'll talk about that later. But that is the basic setup to the diet, all right? And that, my friends, is pretty much it, okay? And we'll talk more about some of the, the ways that we go about hitting our macros when we talk about behavior and lifestyle. But that is episode two. Next time, we're going to be talking about micronutrients. Oh, almost forgot. We're also talking about fiber today. So fiber, all right. Minimum, I would say, would be 20 grams for you ladies, 25 grams for you guys. And then I would say as a maximum, because yes, if you eat just all oats and clean foods and some, some, some things like that, which I run into all the time with my bodybuilders, you can take in too much fiber and it can be detrimental to your GI health and your nutrient absorption. I would say 20% uh, of your carb intake. Okay? So we'll go min, or actually Berto likes to do it, uh, 10, 10 grams per, per 1,000 calories is, is, a, is a decent midway target. But I'll say as a max, all of it, either one's fine. Much respect to my brother. 20% um, of carbs. And do pay attention, this won't work if you're on, if you're on keto. Then you want to go with uh, 10 grams per 1,000 kcals. Okay? So, fiber is important, keeps your gut health happy, uh, contributes to energy expenditure uh, as far as just because it's. It, you have to process it through your body, but it doesn't give you as many calories as these guys, and uh, sometimes it doesn't give any calories. Um, and it's important for health, uh, important for the way we process nutrients, and all that kind of stuff. So, fiber guidelines on the sideline here. Sorry, I almost forgot about that. And we got our guidelines for everything else. Let's bring it in. Okay. So, macronutrient composition of the diet. It's going to depend on goal. First, we need the info. Boom. Four calories per gram for protein and carbs, nine calories per gram of fat. When we are dieting, somewhere in the range of one to 1.4 grams per pound for protein, 15 to 25% for most people for fat and the rest from carbs. Remember, this is for about 80% of people who fall in that age range. And then if you are, boom, gaining, we've got a little less protein. We drop that range by about 0.2 on either end. We up the range of fat by 5%, the rest from carbohydrates. 
good example for a 200 pound male with a 3,000 calorie um, surplus, sorry, uh, maintenance. Put them in a 200 calorie surplus and we have 200 grams of protein, 400 grams of carbs, 90 grams of fat. If he's dieting, we've dropped him down to a 500 calorie deficit, added some cardio, up his protein a little bit, 225. Carbs, 275, which is 55 fat. So that is 20%, that is 25%. And then one gram per pound, 1.1 gram per pound-ish, the rest from carbs, the rest from carbs. And then we have our fiber rex. This is for ladies, men, max 20% of carbohydrates. And then if you're on keto or you have just very low carbohydrates, uh, 10 grams per 1,000 calories as a target. All right, guys, great work. And next week we will talk about micronutrients.